Like every academic, I was a leftist. I went to university, I did a BA, I did an MA, and then I did a PhD. And most of the books that we read were uh, books that you might even call Marxist, outright Marxist, if not leftist in a general sense. But after teaching for about five years, seven years, and really continuing to think, I mean, the left says you sh we should all be critical thinkers, and that's what I did, critically re-examine all my values and assumptions. And I came to the realization that there was a real bias in the university against white students, against white history. That was not fair. And I also observed, as a person who continued to read, that Western civilization had many great achievements. Uh, the Renaissance, the discovery of the world. We're not supposed to use that term, but the Europeans actually discovered the world, mapped every region of the world, uh, produced about 95% of the great discoverers of various areas of the world that nobody had seen before. And then we also had great classical composers, uh, novelists, and philosophers all the way back to ancient Greece. And I thought, this side of European history was being neglected, was being dismissed, and painted in a bad light. I have been a professor now for 20 years, and one of the things that I notice, and anybody who thinks about this or learns about this will also notice it, is that we have a system of education in which it is okay to praise non-Europeans or non-whites. Uh, we understand that all ethnic groups, in fact, multiculturalism says that, that uh, people that are from Africa or from India or from China, that they have pride in their traditions and that we should respect them and we shouldn't put them down. And yet at the same time that we are told that, uh, actually, if you look at many textbooks, uh, they openly uh, put wise in a bad light, they talk always about the bad things they did, the head tax here, the way natives were treated here when we first arrived, uh, the internment of the Japanese. So people ask me, Ricardo, why are you so worried about this? You're exaggerating. Uh, whites are doing really well in Canada. Uh, professors, they may have biases, but everyone has biases. Well, I think it's a, it's a lot more to it than that. I believe that there is a willful intent to create a mindset among students so that they turn against their heritage. I, I believe that we, we are at a point at which we might have to call the university system corrupt, a willful neglect of many issues on the part of professors. As professors, we are obligated to tell the truth. This is why, in a way, I move in this direction, because I really do I'm concerned about the truth. I'm concerned about uh, my obligation as a professor to assess the facts, the evidence, and I think universities are not doing that. They are actually obscuring and denying the facts and obscuring the truth. Uh, what is multiculturalism? We are told over and over again that Canada is a multicultural nation. In fact, we are told that Canada, right from the beginning, was a multicultural nation. So one of the things that I tell students is that we need to make a clear distinction between being a multicultural nation and multiculturalism with an ism at the end. The difference is that you can have nations that are multicultural. Canada was multicultural. When we arrived, when the Anglo arrived here, and not just the Anglo, but people from Ireland, uh, the Scot, Welsh, Germans, Russians, and there were natives here of various ethnic backgrounds. Uh, you could say that Canada was multicultural, but there was no multiculturalism in Canada. Multiculturalism is an ideology that came to Canada uh, starting in the 1960s and it accelerated in the 1970s. And it was an ideology that was imposed from above. Canadians did not ask for it. And so what exactly is this uh, ideology? Well, it is an effort to radically transform the character of Canada in order that Canada loses its European character. Uh, many Canadians don't know that when multiculturalism was introduced in 1971, that the uh, ethnic composition of Canada in 1971 was 96% European. So clearly, uh, we were not multi culture in the way they want us 
or to think that we were. We were, as I said before, many diverse ethnic European groups and some natives, but they were kind of pushing this ideology that multicultural, being multicultural means multiculturalism, and that means bringing the whole world into Canada, bringing people from all kinds of racial backgrounds. So at the source of it, they say, let's not talk about race, that race doesn't exist, but think about it, at the source of it, the problem was that Canada was too white and they needed to make it less white by bringing people from other racial groups. And I think this is not fair. There was no consultation, there was no democratic vote, and other nations like India, China, they have uh, their own places. And they are racially homogeneous. China is very racially homogeneous, so is Japan, so is Korea. And so why do we have to also become completely heterogeneous and lose our European ethnic identity? I disagree with that. So in a way, what we are asking is for fairness, for a level playing field. Uh, we think it is time for European Canadians, for whites, to sit at the table and to say that we count, we will make ourselves count, and we intend to make our case, and we are proud of our history. Every people has committed crimes, and in any case, no nation has ever been created in a, a peaceful way. That's what history is about. And we actually think that on the whole, that uh, Europeans acted rather lenient and in a rather uh, humanitarian way, even in the early phases of the colonization, the settlement of this nation.